Hello guys, it's Bella and welcome back to another Unsolved Mysteries video. Today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Lars Matank. This case is so incredibly bizarre. It's almost hard to wrap your head around because it's just so bizarre. In July 2014, 28-year-old Lars Matank, which I am not sure if I am pronouncing it correctly or not, went on a trip with a few buddies to Golden Sands of Bulgaria, which is kind of like the hotspot for European travelers, Lars being German himself. Lars and his group of friends left Germany on the 30th of June and they planned on returning back to Germany on the 7th of July. They stayed at the HVD Viva Hotel, which is apparently like a really flashy kind of hotel. Um, apparently they had a really good time enjoying the beach, enjoying the sun and just living life. So while they were on the trip, uh, towards the end of the trip, Lars was actually involved in two fights. So the first fight occurred at this bar. They went to a bar to watch Costa Rica versus Netherlands and the football and the bar that they went to was kind of like a sketchy bar to begin with, just not a very nice bar and he ended up getting into a fight with a few guys about the football. So it turned out to be a pretty bad fight because Lars's friends, like Lars's, would you say Lars or Lars's? Lars's friends had to take him to the hospital because he actually got hit so hard in the ear that it ruptured his eardrum. So the doctor told Lars that he was able to fly, which should have been a great thing because they were meant to be leaving in like two days. Um, but Lars decided he didn't want to go and he was going to stay in Bulgaria and get further treatment from his ear. There was another source that I read that said that um, the doctor actually said that he couldn't fly, which I decided to do some further research myself and it just wouldn't make sense that he said he couldn't fly because if you have a um, ruptured eardrum, it actually makes flying better. Well, not flying, I think. It, it makes the pain in your ear better. So basically the hole in your ear can help the pressure in you and the pressure outside of you kind of like it passes through the eardrum and it creates a lot less discomfort for you when you are flying and a lot of the articles for this case are in German there is not a lot that I can actually research from so I kind of for a lot of instances had to do my own research into the things that these people were saying to see which like source was more trustworthy so in this instance I definitely think the doctor said that he could stay but he just didn't want to. I mean it is possible that the doctor didn't allow him to fly for a reason other than his eardrum because as I said I can't read German articles but every source that I said it all had to do with the ear. So the doctor prescribed him with Cefiroxim 500 and this Basically every antibiotic that you take has some sort of side effect um, and this was like any other, it has some sort of side effects but they're very uncommon, especially this one, very uncommon side effects unless mixed with alcohol and drugs. So just keep that in mind for the rest of this video. So anyway, on the 6th, the same day, they all decided to go out again to a bar that night. Very, very smart, but they went to this bar, they were the last customers to leave, and then when they left, they decided to go get some food at McDonald's, and while they were on their way to McDonald's, Lars actually disappeared. They had no idea where he went, and they couldn't find him, and then in the early morning of the 7th, like really, really early hours, like could almost class it as the six, he just rolls back into the hotel and tells them that he was in another fight in this time that he disappeared and it was with the guys that he fought with at the bar the previous day and that these guys had actually hired these like Russians or Bulgarians to kind of like bit bash him up. None of his friends believed the story but they didn't push it and they insisted on staying with Lars in Bulgaria but he just was not having any of it. He was like, no you guys have to go. I'm not gonna make you stay here with me and 
he just said that he was fine and he didn't need them and he eventually convinced them that they didn't need to stay with him so he ended up checking into another hotel that night called Colors which was a very very sketchy hotel and it was in a very very sketchy part of town. He was really having troubles, he was just feeling really anxious, didn't even want to stay in the hotel because he was just so sketched out by it. He ended up leaving the hotel for a little while and then he came back to the hotel and when he got back to the hotel he called his mom back in Germany. So when he called his mom he was just sounded so anxious and paranoid and he was basically just freaking out saying cancel all of my credit cards, cancel everything, this place is so sketchy, like I don't feel good here. He was saying he was scared, that he, the place was strange and he was just basically freaking out. He told her that he was being followed by four men I think it was or just like a few men and that they wanted him for his antibiotics that he had for his ear. So he was just adamant that these guys were after him and that they wanted his antibiotics and that he needed to get out of there and get back to Germany. So his mum ended up booking him a plane flight, a plane ticket and a bus ticket for the 8th of July so that he could just get up and leave. So on the 8th, the day of this flight that his mum had booked, he caught a taxi to the airport so that he could go um, early and check that everything was cool, that he was all clear to fly, check with the doctor, make sure his ear was good and all of that good stuff. Not, I shouldn't say good stuff. Now, when he enters, this is where it gets freaky. So there is security footage of this, which I will include on the screen for you guys to watch, but he gets into the airport. He's wearing a yellow shirt and jean shorts and he's wearing a red and black backpack and carrying a duffel bag. When he gets in there the first thing he does is stops and talks to a woman. No one knows exactly what he said but just based on like what he did it was pretty obvious that he was asking her where the medical services were because straight after he finished talking to her he went over to medical services. So Lars is in the medical center for about 45 minutes before this unknown man walks in. He looks like a construction worker. He's wearing construction worker clothes and as soon as he gets in there Lars becomes extremely anxious he starts fumbling through his bags and looking around and he mumbles something to the doctor before he just sprints he just runs out of the medical center runs out of the airport runs through the car parks and eventually scales a fence until he is out of the view of the camera and then never seen again so the weirdest part of this is it kind of seems like he's running from someone right like this man walks in and then he just bolts he never looks behind him once which if I know if I was running from someone I would definitely check to see if they were running behind me, especially considering once he gets out of the airport and gets into the car park, he's just kind of like lightly jogging, like strolling almost, just going for a light run, doesn't look behind him, doesn't seem like he's in any rush to get away anymore, he's just jogging along until he's out of the view of the camera and then never seen again. It's just the whole, like, the way in which it happened, like, the whole thing is weird, but the way in which he ran just makes me question the whole thing even more. On April the 5th in 2015, there was another sighting of Lars. This was the only sighting. I mean, there was a few sightings here and there from, like, homeless people and stuff, um, but this is the last kind of actual sighting that anyone took any notice of. Um, this truck driver gave this guy a lift. He didn't tell anyone where he dropped him off or where he picked him up from, just said it looks like Lars Matank and that was it. And this again is an unconfirmed sighting so no one knows if he was actually dropping or giving a lift to Lars. Okay, so now let's get into some theories. So the first theory is that Lars is a or was a drug mule for the guys actually that he was got in a fight with at the bar. So if you remember I said um, that he said to his friends that the guys from the bar hired some Russians to follow him and find him and beat him up. So there is a theory that maybe when they got into the first fight that they were like, awesome, this is the perfect opportunity, we are going to use, sorry, fly, we are going to use this guy and that he wasn't lying, that they actually got these Russian or Bulgarian guys to track him down and the reason that he was gone for so long while they're at McDonald's because I, as I said before he came through like really early 
hours of the 7th. He was gone for like a few hours at least and it's possible that they took him and they were kind of just like forcing him to become a drug mule or like giving him the drugs, telling him what to do, where to go, all of that kind of stuff and that's why he was gone for so long. This theory would definitely explain why he wanted his friends to leave so badly despite the fact that when he called his mum he was so scared and definitely was not in the right, right, right mindset to be left alone because he probably just didn't want to get his friends involved in that business. And although in the bags, because when he ran out of the airport, he just left his backpack and his duffel bag and he just bolted. And when they looked through them, they didn't find any drugs at all. But honestly, like that's what some people say, like this theory is not true because there was no drugs found. It kind of makes sense that there was no drugs in there because you have to be a pretty stupid drug mule to get drugs through in your bags. It's more likely that you would have them on your body or like, you know, or if you swallow them in little baggies. It would also explain why he ran, whether or not the construction worker that came in was the trigger if he, if that guy was part of the whole drug mill thing and then he saw him and just freaked out or if he just freaked out on his own. It definitely makes sense why he ran and didn't even look behind him because he wasn't running for someone, he was just running because he was too scared to go through with smuggling these drugs. And then it also makes like a lot of sense as to why he hasn't been seen or heard from again because I know if I pissed off some Russian drug dealers, I would want to disappear off the face of the earth as well, so that makes complete sense to me as well. It's also a possibility that he did swallow the baggies, and sometimes it happens where people who are smuggling drugs, they swallow them and then the bag explodes and then they kind of like overdose on it. So it is also possible that that's what happened and there's that's why there's been no sightings of him since, because he possibly overdosed and passed away. Okay, next theory. So as I mentioned before, he was on antibiotics. And as I said before, all antibiotics have side effects. Um, this one, the side effects are very uncommon unless drinking alcohol or doing drugs, which he was drinking alcohol, if you recall, the same night he got prescribed these antibiotics, he went out to a bar that same night and was drinking. So this next theory is that he had some sort of reaction or side effect from these antibiotics that caused him to have maybe like a psych psychotic episode or just caused him to act out. I ended up looking into this myself and looking into the tablet that he was taking. It was an oral tablet which was used to treat um, a whole variety of infections and I looked in. So commonly if you look at the side effects of this um, particular antibiotic, it doesn't look like the side effects could cause him to have an episode of psychosis or whatever he was feeling but if you look into how this antibiotic can perform when mixed with alcohol it is a whole nother story. It can cause severe anxiety, dizziness, heart palpitations, nausea and vomiting. So I mean he was pretty anxious this whole time so it definitely could make sense that it was some sort of side effect. I don't I don't know this theory it's so weird because I feel like it's so likely because I just can't imagine what else was happening like he just kind of was fine and then all of a sudden everything just kind of flipped upside down but at the same time it doesn't seem likely. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. So the third and last theory that I'm going to talk about is that this whole thing was set up by Lars so that he could leave and just start a whole new life. I don't really believe this one, but I guess it does kind of make sense in theory. Um, he did ask his mom to cancel all of his credit cards, which is like, why, why would you do that? Um, he made his friends leave before him when he clearly was not in the right state of mind to be alone overseas. And not only that, but he stayed when the doctor said that he could have flown. And he came up with this excuse where he was like, oh, you know, I should stay and make sure that my ear is fine, whatever, whatever, even though the doctor said that he could fly. So that is kind of a little bit sketchy on his behalf. It is even possible that he staged this whole fight. Well, not staged. The, the other guy didn't know about it but in the theory it suggests that maybe he kind of got into this fight 
as an excuse not to f fly, which is kind of a little bit excessive because, I mean, he did end up getting a serious injury to his ear, which, how could he have predicted that? But he could have gotten into this fight and then when he disappeared for a little while and came back, like, I, when he came back, I didn't read anything about him looking, like, bruised or battered or whatever, which is, like, why his friends probably didn't believe him. I don't know, maybe he did look bruised and battered but from what I read I didn't see anything about that and I feel like that would have been reported um, he could have just disappeared wandered off by himself come back at such a late time so that he could make up this excuse that oh they sent these guys to follow me and beat me up and then called his mom and was like I'm being followed and blah 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 so that it was kind of like this whole elaborate plan so that he could just escape but again this theory doesn't make sense for like a lot of reasons but also he was just like a happy guy at home there didn't seem to be any problems or any reasons for him to leave it also doesn't make sense that if he did want to do this whole thing um, and start a new life why did he even go to the airport in the first place um, but I guess it makes sense why he just jogged off so casually as if it was nothing and nobody was coming after him. But honestly, I think this theory just seems way too specific and way too far-fetched to be true. But that is everything. That brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what you think. I honestly have no idea which theory I believe the most. I... I kind of feel like the antibiotic one makes the most sense, even though it doesn't really. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think. If you have any more information, if any of you guys are German and read up on this case, that would be amazing because my sources are so limited. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any more theories or what theory you guys believe and why, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see more and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye!